Bella, you okay? I'm sleeping. Sleep, sleep. Hello, makers. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I uploaded a video, and the reason is that all I've been doing is printing PPE shields. In the past four weeks, I've printed almost 4,000 shields now, which I've donated completely. Um, so yeah, it's been quite busy. Um, the only thing I didn't print that wasn't PPE shields was was Frankenoop, which I designed in ZBrush. It was my first ever, ever sculpt. Um, I made it exclusive to my patrons as a thank you. But yeah, anyway, so as I was saying, um, yeah, all I've been printing is PPE shields and it's been extremely busy. And now I have 15 or 16 printers upstairs, 15 in my office, one in the corridor. Um, so yeah, it, it gets quite hectic. Now printing with that many printers, being alone, gets quite hectic. I am not stacking my prints because I did some text at the bottom saying that it's gifted by 3DMN in order to make sure that no one sells them. Uh, and therefore, if I stack them, that, that base will not come as clean. So yeah, I decide to, uh, to just print two at a time, which take about an hour and a half. Now with an hour and a half print, having 15 printers, um, what usually happens is, is that every couple of minutes, a uh, printer is ready. So I need to take that off and then I need to reprint and take that off. And if there is an issue, I need to adjust the, uh, the, the print itself, the, the G code. So that becomes quite hectic. However, I did have some help. And today I wanna to talk to you about this awesome software from Race3D that helps you control a print farm very nicely. For those of you who have a Race3D printer or have used a Race3D printer in the past, you're probably aware of Raise Cloud, which is a cloud-based software to control all your Race3D printers. And this software was in beta testing or, or beta format for the past year, I believe. Um, and it gives you quite a lot of options of monitoring, time-lapse features. Uh, you can do online slicing, file um, distribution among teams. You have queues. Um, and this this, this has uh, been exclusive for Race 3D printers for quite a while and it's been an absolute blast to use. However, for the past few months, Race Cloud have started a new venture and that is Race Cloud Lite. And the way it works is if you have Octoprint, you can just simply download a plugin, add it, bind your printer, and you can actually use Race Cloud with third party printers. Now, out of my 15 printers, I believe I, I managed to connect about 11 or 12 of them. Um, the reason I didn't connect more is one, my tool changer, uh, well, it's Duet Wi Fi, I can control that remotely anyway. Uh, Zmorph takes a bit of fiddling to get it connected to Octoprint. Um, and my Craftbot, which is currently in a different place and I don't have a plug there for, you know, the. You, Raspberry Pi. But today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a bit more about this Race Cloud Lite. Um, I have an extra Raspberry Pi which I already have Octoprint installed on it. Uh, it already has a dedicated IP address. It's a static IP address which I believe is very important in order not to confuse. I kind of labeled all my printers so I know that um, a certain IP address equates to a certain printer. Um, but I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to install and all the features that a Race Cloud Lite has that can help you out um, when it comes to uh, managing a print farm. So the first thing you need to do is go to cloud.race3d.com and create an account. It's free to, uh, to create an account and once you sign in, um, you will present it with Race Cloud. Um, you can accept the release notes. Now, as you can see here, um, I have 12 printers which are offline at the moment because I, I found a minute to actually switch them off to record this video um, because if they're all on, I can barely hear myself thinking here, let alone speak to you guys. So, um, I have a Raspberry Pi, which is um, uh, which is already installed with Octoprint. Uh, it's connected to my Sidewinder X1 at the moment. And I'm gonna show you guys the process to actually install Race Cloud app on Octoprint in order to be able to control it uh, on Race Cloud and then tell you what the benefits are. Now, there are instructions here on how to bind a 3D printer. Um, well, well, well it, it tells you actually how to install Octoprint, what to do in order to put a static IP. Um, but all I want to talk about in this video is this link right here. So I'm gonna copy that link address. I'm gonna go to Octoprint and then I'm gonna go to my plugin manager. I'm gonna click on get more here. Obviously make sure that your Octoprint is up to date. I'm gonna paste the URL here and I'm gonna press install. And it's just gonna go ahead and install the plugin. After a few seconds, it's gonna tell you that it's done and you're just going to need to restart your 
Octoprint instance. Once you reload your Octoprint, um, then what we can do is straight away we can connect to the printer because it is switched on. Um, so I can just connect to it straight away. Once it's connected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the spanner icon here. And if I scroll down to the bottom, there's the Race Cloud plugin. Now here I need a binding key. And to get that, all I need to do is go to Race Cloud. I'm going to download the 3D printer binding key. I'm going to go back to Octoprint, upload the binding key, which is right here. I'm going to accept the terms and conditions. Um, you might want to read those. And I'm going to press bind. And now that's successfully uh, binded. I'm just going to rename the printer to Sidewinder X1. I'm going to write two because I already have another one which is already binded. I'm going to click on save. Once that's done, I can actually close Octoprint. And as you can see, it's up here. It's on standby my Sidewinder X1 version 2. So as you can see, you can also connect a camera um, to the Octoprint, um, which you will be able to monitor here. Now bear in mind that this is still in beta, um, so a lot of things still need improvement, but it can get the job done. At the moment, you have an unlimited number of printers that you can add. Um, Race3D have decided to forgo the option of limiting the number of printers for the time being due to the situation of the COVID-19. Um, a lot of people have large print farms who are printing PPE shields, so this is sort of a way to assist them um, in managing those prints better with less downtime. Now you could tell me, well, this is the same as Octoprint. Yes, however, um, to give you an idea, I can monitor this from anywhere in the world from one place. Um, so they do have a native app on Android and iOS, um, and you can still do the same features you have here on the app. So even if I'm out of home, I can actually tell my wife, listen, could you go in my office and take the prints off printers one, five, and six, for example, she takes them off. And once it's done, I can simply go myself into the app and restart, uh, reprint the next batch. You obviously have a list of your printers, which you can filter. Now, once again, this is integrated to Race3D as well. So even your Race3D printers are here. I've asked Race3D to actually include the facility to, or the ability to, to upload a photo of your printer. It just makes it easier to recognize them straight away off, right off the bat. So as you can see, it comes in quite handy. Uh, it's kind of like a layer on top of Octoprint. You still has the you still have the functionality of Octoprint anytime you want. I can just log in to my Octoprint server, which is right here. Um, this is just kind of like a layer on top. So if you have many Raspberry Pis connected to your 3D printers, which are running Octoprint, you can sort of collate them together here and control them from one single location wherever you are, especially with the app, which makes it absolutely brilliant. Now, as I said, there's still a few bugs to work out, which is why it's still in beta phase. Uh, these are being polished as far as I know. So hopefully this can only get better. Now, as for features, you actually have your dashboard here, uh, which gives you an idea of how many jobs are ready, how many are printing, completed, some are on hold, it gives you your team information here. Um, also the printer statuses here. Um, you can just click on these to see which of your printers are flying. You can also clear the filters here so you can see all your printers. Uh, there's another one there. Um, you can just, you know, filter out to see which ones are on standby. And you also have a live state as well. Now this will show you all your printers. If I do this, um, they're all my printers and these are the ones which I have binded. Uh, right here, it gives me the status of each and every single one, just for much easier visual. Um, and also I have, well, yeah, this status wall here. Now, this, the files, the files is, is quite awesome because you can sort of organize your files accordingly to your printers. I like to put a folder for each and every single printer because each are sliced differently. And if I want to print something on the Ender 3 with the Hemera and the Yopo 6 millimeter, I have the files um, which were sliced for that particular printer over here. Um, if I choose this file right here, uh, this was sliced in Idea Maker, so I can actually get a visual of what the G code looks like um, or what the end print looks like. I can also edit the G code. So um, if I go into editor here, you can see there's the full G code. And you know, if I need to um, 
make any changes whatsoever i don't i don't see why you would uh, but if you need to you can actually just you know edit your g code here you have your file information here this is obviously is only visible if you slice with idea maker if you slice with um wait hold on if you slice with Prusa Slicer, for example, which I, I tend to do for the Prusa machines, um, and you click on that, you don't get the data file information here, obviously. So you just get the file size, the name, and the upload time. But you can still edit the G-code if you want to. Now, once you're here, we go to the Sidewinder X1, um, I can choose print over there, um, and I can choose the printer down here. And then what I can do is set the amount of prints that I want or set the amount of copies that I want. Um, and if I click on start print now, it will start printing straight away. And if I go on my workbench here, it says one is busy, it's processing the G code. Once I clear it here, it should go on as it's printing. So now once we're here, we can also, once again, we can edit the settings, we can adjust the nozzle temperature, the heat bed, the flow rate, feed rate, fan speed, well, pretty much everything you would be able to change on your printer in terms of on the fly settings. You can also stop, you can also pause the print. Um, you can also set notifications, so you can receive notifications on your mobile app um, when the print is completed, when it's stopped, um, anything like that. So in here, if I click stop here, so it stops the print, it says confirm, once it stops, as you can see, there is completed. There's very good. It's like it's been completed. What I can do here is set complete. If I click on that very good mark or that check mark, I can choose whether the print was a success or a failure. Then I can check the I have removed the model on the platform. Now, if I click on submit, it stops there. If I click on submit and print next, what it will do, it will just start printing again the next job, which um, in this case was the second out of the 10 copies I wanted of that particular print. Now, if I want to, let's, let's stop this again. Now, if I wanted to, let's say I chose the wrong model here to print. Um, if I go back to my files, let's, let's choose another. We'll use this as an example. Um, so come on, let's go on the Ender 3. Uh, we'll choose this one. I'll put it on the Sidewinder, three copies or four copies, confirm. Now, if I go on the printer here, you can actually see there is a queue now uh, of prints that I put together. So as soon as it finishes printing these 10, it will go on to the next batch of prints that I set up in the queue. However, I can actually have it do it all manually. So as you can see here, there's an, there is this slider which basically tells the printer not to receive jobs from the cloud and lets everything be done manually. Um, so if I want to re remove this one now, all I have to do is click on delete. It will stop this particular print or these prints. Um, in fact, I just received a notification on my mobile that says that the, um, uh, the job has been deleted in the team. And then it jumps on to the next one. Once I click on complete here, let's say I have removed the model, submit and print next, it will remove this uh, current job over here and we'll go into the next one. Now, one of the awesome things about this is, as you guys know, I use IdeaMaker quite a lot. And therefore, if I bring IdeaMaker in here, I can actually log in directly to Raise Cloud. And what that allows me to do is slice a model Instead of export it, I can upload it directly to Raise Cloud. So we'll mention this Spicer Gifted X1. It's not an X1, but well, you know, X1. So it's uploaded. If I go into the file section here and I refresh, the file is down here. Um, and what I can do is I can then move it onto the X1 folder. And now it's there. And obviously then I can go ahead, choose the printer, put it on the queue. And obviously the printer is there. It's waiting for me to approve a print that I did. But as you can see, it's down here on the queue. Now I can remove this queued file here. So then when I click on 
I remove the model, submit print next, it jumps straight away onto this one. So as you can see, it's relatively straightforward to use. Um, you also have a jobs list down here, so you can see exactly what's been printed, how many have been printed. Um, you can also see which printer they were printed on. Um, all the information about that particular file, you can obviously clear this list, um, put everything in the trash bin. Um, files, you have your files which you upload. Um, they have the team files which are dedicated to particular teams. Um, you can also set um, um, team settings here where you can put the roles and you can put the limitations on the uh, actions that that person can actually do on the race cloud for access. So it's quite versatile and it's quite packed full of features for, uh, for the light version. So yeah, this is definitely something that is more than capable of getting the job done. So as you can see, this gives you quite a bit of flexibility. You're still using Octoprint, which is an awesome system. And just want to point out here that Race3D are working in conjunction with Gina uh, from Octoprint in order to make this as polished as possible. Now, if you're used to Race Cloud um, for the past year, you'll see that you'll have a bit less options on this Race Cloud light, um, which is why it's called the light version. It still has the basic fundamentals of what you need to run a 3D printing farm. Um, um, but not all the features that were there. Now, while it doesn't have the full functionality that the Race Cloud Pro will have, this is more than enough um, from what you'll need in order to run a print farm. And if it wasn't for this, I wouldn't have been able to maximize my output so much in the past few weeks. That is it for my end, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, Race Cloud Lite has made my life much easier. Um, and I'm, I'm glad I got to be a part of the beta program because I can see this being extremely useful. Um, it, it already has proven itself very useful. So I, I urge you, I highly recommend you check it out, especially if you're running Octoprint already. You know, there's absolutely nothing to lose. In the meantime, time if you have any questions comment section below um, as for me i'm doing great as i said i'm still printing ppe shields this was the only hour i've managed to sort of sync everything and have them all kind of like quiet so i can record but yeah i have many more to print uh 4, so far so yeah we'll see how that goes in the meantime stay safe stay inside and as always happy making guys